Oh, hello, it's you. Come on in. I was expecting you. Welcome to Daptone Records. started the studio I don't think we had a 10-year vision um, other than get through the next couple of years you know and make a couple of good records. Ten years ago 2001 I didn't think I'd be in the record industry I probably thought I'd be teaching high school um, getting by you know maybe listening to a lot of records you know having some kids I do listen to records and have some kids, but I don't teach high school. So, it wasn't that far off, really. We'd, we'd had the label for about a year when we just started talking to all the landlords that could offer us a space for, I don't even want to say a reasonable amount of money, I would say cheap, because that was our situation at the time. So we were definitely in this neighborhood of Brooklyn called Bushwick. We were looking for a studio and somebody owed us some money, so we thought we'd go big. So we went to the nicest neighbor we could find, Bushwick, Brooklyn, and found the biggest, fanciest piece of real estate we could, this house. I walked into this place right away, I knew this was the spot. Neil had some doubts, but I knew, I had a feeling in my gut, that this is the place. Yeah, when I first saw this building, I said, how are you gonna make this a studio? It was two apartments, that they were trying to rent, so we took the whole building from them, and one of the stipulations was like, it is your problem. I mean, we had the whole house, and you know, we were building the offices and the stock room, and we were building, you know, really building the recording studio and isolating walls and uh, double windows and, and curving things and hanging curtains and everything, you know? So there was a, um, yeah, it was, it was a big undertaking. The first thing was deciding where everything was gonna lay, be laid out, and. The control room being probably the biggest room in the house only because truly that's where you spend most of your time when you're making records. Sharon helped me with a lot of wiring. Charles Bradley helped me with a lot of radiators. The Budos band were knocking down walls. Gabe called me and said, Charles, I know you're a good handyman. I can enter the studio, tow down the stills, build new stills up there. Wow. And I'm putting in the electrical sockets. He had to go in and put the blue wire to the, the positive and the negative and Make sure they're right, and make sure it's in tight, so they don't, you know, you don't spark, cause the fire, burn out, anything. All I remember is just like carrying out trash bags full of broken wall. That's all I remember. We ripped out. The, there were gas lines going to all the lights, and I ripped those out. We used those for curtain rods, and I found some used, like some theater company or something, didn't use a bunch of 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 these uh, velvet curtain material. So I sent them to my mom. My mom actually sewed all the curtains for me. The live room worked out great. We, it was combined the kitchen and the dining room, which we then went ahead and just tore out the kitchen, tore out the ceiling to expose the beams, which created a better acoustic for us. Um, then kind of jerry-rigged a live room out of uh, sort of old car tires and lots of rags from wherever we could find them. In the sound room, to keep, get that certain sound, they put tires and then stuffed them with old clothes, just clothes. Yeah, get the clothes. Anywhere, clothes, we, you know, people had old clothes, they found, just went around and got old clothes. So it was really, um, you know, trying to make something happen out of not that much money. It was mostly the money we raised from selling 45s. Everybody chipped in and we uh, turned it into the, uh, the uh, castle that it is today. Over the past 10 years, we've made a bunch of records. These are some of them in, in these boxes. This is our control room. Come on, let's see what's happening. I got a thing on my mind. I'm sure I'm not gonna find it. I got a thing on my mind. Come on the back, let's see what's happening. This is our live room. Oh, hi guys. How you doing? Look who's here. Hey, how you doing? Joey Crispiano, bass player. This is CTO Wayne Gordon, 
chief tape operator here at Daphne Records and uh, tape op of America. Three years, three years in a row. Four years in a row. Four years in a row. Four years in a row. He's going for five this year. This is our isolation room, floating on tires. It's not touching the house. With brand new shiny toys. People can mess up as much as they want, and we can record over it because they're isolated. Well, most of the studios that I have recorded, they was more had more up to date equipment than than Daptone. But I like the sound that uh, Daptone get. <laughs> I like it because it's bringing back to the olden days, you know, to get that natural sound. And there's nothing too magical about that place as far as it goes to sitting there and play music. It's kind of dusty and raggedy and you kind of like, get me the hell out of here. But, you know, it sounds like magic. Well, I saw you have soul and R&B going on through this house. They don't just produce one thing, they got a little of everything going on. Yeah. And that's what makes it exciting. So you're not limited and your people don't have time to get bored with just one thing. They got different sounds here. Man, Daptone sounds the way it sounds because of Gabe, because he's a phenomenal recording engineer. And if you take away the songs and you just listen to the sound, that is Gabe manipulating that house to sound you know, incredible. And that comes from a group of guys that have been playing music together a long time and in a room they've been playing together in a long time. There's a sound to the room, there's a sound to this, this crew, this bunch of guys. Man, that's our number one resource here. I think that's the biggest thing is to have, have a crew of musicians like that, guys that know, that know how to make a record, know how to make a sound, know how to play together as, as, as a group, as a band, you know? It's really a group of musicians that really are deep inside the genre and the sound of the records and know how to play in this particular studio and make this stuff come to life and the fact that we're backing different singers and different projects and, you know, you see that, that real family of musicians. Everyone that's part of this family, the part of the staff, uh, all the artists, we're all pretty big nerds when it comes to records, you know. It, it excites us and um, I think we're all inspired by it, obviously, and you can hear it in the recordings. Would you like to go upstairs? Okay, come on. You're not getting bored, are you? Okay, good. Come on. Here's some more records. We'll probably have these sold by the end of the day. This is a really nice part of the house. Come check this out. This is a bathroom. A lot of heavy decisions get made in here. Platinum records. Beautiful painted seashells. Come in the kitchen. Let's see what's happening in the kitchen. Oh, oh, hello, guys. Look who's here. Look who's here. There you we go. The food, man. There you go. You got the Dap Kings right here having sushi. Mm -hmm. And then here's the true epicenter, Nidia Inez, who's emailed so fast she had to get a second computer, one one with each hand. Taking care of business. Yeah. Kathy Bauer here, beating money out of people, mm -hmm. making things happen. Yeah, yeah. I got I got to make some calls. Signing some deals. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hear that? That's a big <laughs> that's a big deal that just came in. That's right. It? Yeah, yeah. Here's our stock room. The boxes you see laying around are all full of records, which we sell and keep in stock. These are all records. These are records. 45s. What do you want? 45s? We got lots of 45s. Whatever you need. This is how our boxes go out, like that. I think our philosophy as a label has been, first of all, to put out records that we like and put out records that are like the records that we like to listen to and developing that kind of brand recognition that few labels really have now, you know, something where as when you saw Motown or Stax, when you saw the label on the record as you were pulling the record out, you saw the, the glimpse of that Motown label and you knew that there was going to be a vibe when you dropped the needle on the record. And that's what we're hoping that the Daptone label will evoke in people. People like the idea that we're sitting around here in the house trying to make music that sounds good to us. And if it sounds good to them too, they're gonna buy it. And that's the marketing plan, you know? It's really honest, it's really soulful. And, uh, you know, I think that's what carries us through, really, in the end. As far as what, what I was thinking 10 years ago, I mean, I didn't think we'd still be in business. I'm pleasantly surprised that that many people 
like the same, you know, like the same stuff that we like. And so I think we did good coming in here from what we have, and we got a little bit more ways to go, but it's the spirit. It's, it feels good in here. Thank you. It's been a real, uh, it's been a coup. We've been, we've been on a hell of a run, man. We're really lucky. And it's getting better and better. This is our house, um, this is the house of soul. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. See you next time. Bye.